Hi, I'm Robert with Sigma 3 Survival School, and we're here today. We're going to be putting together a debris hut, uh, an A-frame jungle hooch, and we're also going to be doing a scout pit. And uh, as you can see right now, we're clearing out the area uh, to do our modified debris hut in. Um, right here, we're going to do it about body length wise. So when you're first starting the shelter, you want to lay down, you know, measure, find out where your feet are going to be, where your head's going to be, exactly where you want the door at. And uh, we will always want to face our shelter south, or uh, not south, but east, so that uh, obviously the sun comes up. You can see the sun coming through the door, and it's also good for prevailing winds. Uh, we're going to clear this area. I'm going to build two A-frames right here. We're going to have the door over here. And we're also, the modification on this de uh, specific debris hut is we're going to have an internal heating system in it where we're going to actually build a rock pit and put heated rocks in there. Uh, during the winter when it's cold. All right, we've got uh, a good portion of our frame up so far. Essentially, we've created two A-frames. The other one's not up. We'll show you that in a moment. Uh, we're running a header that runs basically the whole length of the, the structure right here, and there'll be another header that comes across. Now, if we were doing this completely primitively with no modern tools whatsoever, uh, we've mainly been cutting live trees for the purpose of getting this done with some expediency. Uh, but if we didn't have any modern tools whatsoever, we would find, you know, just standing dead stuff. And what you can do in order to, you know, trim this stuff down to size is you just find a tree to use as a leverage point. And you just, you know, pick where you want to break it. You know, let's say we want to break it right in here. And it's that simple. You just snap it off to the length you need for your ribs and uh, and you're good to go. Now, another thing that we're doing here to make it a little bit more comfortable since this is going to be a permanent camp fixture and not full survival situation, uh, we're going to dig this base out and we're going to create uh, a little debris bed in here. And if you've never slept on a debris bed, uh, they kind of act like memory foam. After you sleep on them and they compress, it has a tendency to form to the shape of your body and they can be very comfortable. So we're going to dig this out probably four inches all the way down and to the front and fill this with leaves and, and different things that we can find in the forest. And over here, uh, this is the modification on the debris hut that most of you have seen on YouTube videos or wherever in other survival courses. Uh, we're adding an internal heating system into this shelter so that you don't have to cover yourself up and feed it debris in order to stay warm in a survival situation. So if we were going to camp out overnight in this, uh, we'd get us a fire going, uh, we'd take some smaller rocks, medium-sized rocks, and you fill this pit as deep as you need with rocks depending on the weather outside, and after we get all our debris and insulation on there, it's going to contain all your heat uh, throughout the night. If you've never slept with hot rocks before, uh, the larger the rocks that you heat up, the longer they stay warm, obviously. And, uh, you know, they'll usually last almost all night. And if you throw quite a few in here, it'll probably cook you out, depending on how cold it is outside. We got our, uh, our pit dug. We got our rock pit over there. That's where we're going to put our, our heated rocks in. And we went ahead and dug down about four inches in almost kind of like a mummy-shaped pattern. And we're throwing our debris in there in order to make our, our, our primitive memory foam mattress. And uh, we're trying to get all the sticks out so they don't jab you in the butt, you know, when you are in there in the middle of the night. And because uh, that will happen. And we do try to, we will smudge this out eventually to get the bugs out. Um, and we're fixing to lay our frame over the top of that. And as soon as we get our frame up, we'll make our door and go ahead and cover it with debris, and uh, it'll be a completed project. Hey guys, I'm Jerry Ward here with Sigma 3 uh, doing the shelter class weekend here. Uh, picking up where we left off last time, we we covered the entire structure with some some uh, limbs, ribs, uprights, whatever you want to call them. Um, give a nice rigid platform, and then on top of that, we cut some live green boughs off the hardwoods around here, a lot of oak, hickory, some dogwood. What that's going to kind of do is just knit everything together and cover up the entire structure and give us something else that we can then take the uh, leaf litter pile on there about two feet deep. Um, the whole reason we're doing this so deep, it may sound like overkill, is because not only is that leaf litter going to compact 
and settle down as the air blows through as the time goes on but it's also going to give us that much more insulative value, R value, raise the R value of the shelter and it's going to give that much more of a layer for the rain, the precipitation to filter through so ideally it won't actually hit you, you know, in your shelter. Now you, now you see this stick sticking up right here, we've got a couple of them over the top. You don't want to have anything protruding over the top of your leaf litter. Uh, these lower ones are probably going to be okay given that we're going to put two feet on, but we need to take this guy off because the rain's going to hit this, run down that stick, work its way through all your layers and still have this path to travel on, you'll end up with a drip inside. So we're going to work on that, get that whittled down. Next step's just going to be covering this thing up with leaf litter and we're fabricating a door right now to close in on yourself so you can trap all that heat in from the hot rocks. All right, we've got our, our debris shelter covered up for the most part. Um, we're fixing to put our debris litter on top, which is our leaves. Um, optimally, we want a minimum of two feet of debris on every section of this. That will ensure that no water is going to drip through, uh, that it'll stay warm in conditions uh, down below freezing temperatures. Uh, let's say we were down in an area, you know, let's say we're in Montana where it's freezing cold and, you know, it gets 20 below. You can stack it up as much as four or five feet and you can pretty much handle almost any temperatures you can imagine in a debris hut, especially with an internal heating system. Um, we did use some modern tools to uh, help us put this together. You know, we've got some twine here that's just, you know, for expediency, but all these things can be done primitively. Uh, there's a ton of stuff around here to make cordage with. There's dog vein down in the valley, willow, hickory all around us. Hickory takes a little while to process, but you can you can make a cordage out of it. Um, but everything here can be done with zero tools or you know a minimal amount of tools or however. Um, if you look down in here, you can see that uh, we've got our bed down in there, and uh, we've got our fire pit off to the right. We make our door just small enough to where we can crawl through on both sides and after we finish the project um, we'll have a good stack of leaves right up here next to our door so that when we crawl in we'll grab those leaves and bring them in with us that way we can shove this door way full of uh, debris and then we're also going to uh, put a door in here that will uh, be uh, triangle shaped and it'll have uh, saplings weaved and then in between the saplings we'll take cedar branch boughs to keep any air movement from coming through and we use the debris to plug up any holes and make it uh, substantially uh, warmer. Just like in real estate everything is location, location, location. When you're building a shelter like this you want to make sure that you put this in areas that it's going to be protected from other areas like the overhanging trees here are going to prevent excess amounts of rain. Uh, if we were down by the field, uh, we would build, uh, you know, towards a south-facing area to where when the sun comes up, it's going to heat your shelter in the morning. And we always face our, our shelter facing east, uh, you know, so when the sun comes up, obviously, and usually that's, a, you know, a good location for prevailing wind so that you haven't got wind coming straight into your shelter. You also want to work, look out for widow makers, you know, any kind of standing dead trees that'd be around your shelter in a windstorm that might get blown, you know, over. Uh, obviously, you don't want to get uh, injured by something like that, so pay attention for uh, any standing dead trees. All right, uh, here we are the next morning trying to get uh, this door finished up. We built the jungle A-frame hooch yesterday. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start uh, running the grid for that, uh, finishing up the debris litter on uh, the debris shelter. And um, I'm going to put this door together real quick just to give you a quick rundown on how we're doing this. It's just like we're sandwiching debris in between to provide insulation. And we cut each one of these to length so that uh, the top header on the debris hut will slide up under this uh, so that it's secure and uh, you, you pack as much debris as you possibly can in here to prevent any kind of air seepage. Uh, you could use, uh, you know, oak leaves, just whatever you got around here. I happen to prefer cedar boughs. Uh, eat pretty easily stuffed in here and, and they'll last a long time. Um, you just uh, make a triangular door that fits uh, perfectly for the debris hut that we've built. Uh, leave a little notch on, up here so that it slides under. And you just make a little grid on both sides of your, your sticks in order to uh, 
have a, a dead space in here because the way insulation works is you provide dead air space and that's what uh, keeps the warmth in. So all we do is just take some sticks, cut them to size, throw our cedar boughs in there and uh, tie it up and it'll be ready to rock and roll. Action. Hi, my name is Robert with Sigma 3 Survival. Uh, this is our finished debris hut. Um, it's a modified version. We got all of our leaf debris on here. There's a minimum of about two feet in every section. Um, if we were in an Arctic, you know, conditions, we'd be putting a little bit more on there, but this is plenty warm for Arkansas. Um, just to show you a little bit about the door construction and what we've got going on here in the front, we've got an extra heavy I built in a, a little crossbar here so that we could put in extra insulation up here around the front door. And then the door is basically a triangle that we've sam sandwiched uh, cedar boughs in between. And it's built in a way so that um, when you crawl in that uh, you can wedge the door. And I'll show you when I get inside why we want to do that. Always go in feet first. And then when we get in, we'll bring, we have a large pile of debris off to the right hand side in here. And if we were in really cold conditions where we didn't want any air to come in, what we do is we bring this door in behind us and uh, behind me and you'll stuff any, any kind of cracks, any kind of little holes you see right there, you'll fill with debris. And the reason we build this door kind of difficult so that you can wedge it in is so that when you do start stuffing debris into it, it doesn't kick the door out. Right over here to our other side, this is where we built our, our uh, little fire pit. It's not for fire. It's uh, what you do is you heat up rocks uh, in the fire and then you'll place them in here as many as you need in order for the conditions that you're in Now if, if you know if we had a couple of feet of snow out on the ground We could throw three or four hot rocks in there and that would keep us cooking all night long In fact these shelters are so warm more than a couple, few a handful of rocks would may cook you out of there. Um, show them the actual debris bed inside. Pan over to the right and look at the If you have any questions um, about how to build a survival shelter like that, just uh, drop us a line on our email and we'd be happy to you know, send you any pictures or instructional info on how to build this. Uh, we've got video of the whole process and, and other shelters that we've made. And, and uh, keep checking back with the website because we're continually updating things for the future. We've got a fire making cordage class and a lot of different things coming up. So uh, keep looking at the website and we appreciate your support. And, uh, my, like I said, my name is Robert with Sigma 3 Survival, and uh, we're happy to have you all out here.